Hello and welcome to this edition of the show. I'm your host, Brian Mallard. Got Tim over there running all the equipment. Yeah, we're trying to at least. (laughs) Doing all the stuff I don't know how to do. Um, And uh, still getting used to my new spectacles. Uh, If they look funny, it's because my eyes were dilated while I was trying to pick out the frames. (laughs) Oh, you did the blind guy glasses, huh? uh, I did a little bit of checking before I actually got the eye exam. But yeah, the final selection was... Half blind, so <laughs> but they're Ray Ban, so you, you, know, you know. Well, you know, every time I go, I always want the really cool small glasses. Right. But every th- every pair I put on, they always go. You know, you have a really big head, so <laughs> those glasses are too small. <laughs> so I end up getting like the big nerd glasses. Right. Well, I actually heard that the big nerd glasses are better because there's more room on them for each. Like these are bifocal, so you got this down here, and then you got this up here. The smaller the glasses, the more they have to cram it in. You know, the bigger glasses are better for you actually seeing, wow. which is, you know. But All right. Well, you know, we'll get off, get off glasses because I'm sure Katie here is, is really <laughs> fascinated by this conversation. No, I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm learning something new. <laughs> this week's get special guest on the show is Katie Martin. Katie, thank hey, you for hey. coming in. How are you doing? Thank hey. you for having me. Oh. Hey, Katie, pull that mic a little bit closer to you. Oh, That's, okay. Uh, it's okay. Right there? Yeah, there we go. Nice. This show brought to you in part by American Guitar Boutique. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, venture into that a little bit later into the show. There's, n- there's never too much product placement. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, hey. so, Katie, it's been a while since we've you know really sat down and talked, so uh, tell me a little oh, bit yeah. about what you've had going on since uh, Minstrels on the Block. It's been a long time now. Hasn't yeah, it has it, indeed. At least yeah. five, five, six years, something yeah. like that. Um, well, I guess since then, I moved up to Atlanta. So I've been up there and kind of, uh, I started working with Larry Mitchell in the studio. So I've done a couple albums with him, one full album, a couple live ones, and uh, I'm about to put out my second album with him. That is really so. cool. Larry Mitchell's really good, really good guy and, and really talented musician. Yeah, I, I saw mm-hmm. a picture which, you know, we... We're sitting here in a two-car um, studio. Two-car <laughs> studio. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, and then Katie puts out this picture where she was in the studio, and I, I man, just green. I was just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you saw his board. Had the drum. <laughs> oh, the I didn't drum, get to see the yeah. board. But, uh, the drum's yeah. mine. The, the oh, Jim Bay one? Yeah, I, I mean, mine. it was just the background. <laughs> and have, you know, like 20 guitars behind yeah. her. And yeah, he's got all his acoustics there. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> One fun. day. He's always got some cool stuff in there, like new guitars and things to check out when I go in. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get one guitar stand. He has like a <laughs> rack of about 20 of them. That's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, guitar stands are really handy to have, especially like at a gig, which I'm learning. Uh, anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, um, you moved to Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. Why did you move to Atlanta? And is it working out the way that you hoped it would? I mean, it, it, it works out. <laughs> you know, I, I moved up there because I guess when I was down here, I was doing art school. So I was right. doing art stuff. Mm-hmm. And I just decided I wanted to go more in the direction of music. Mm-hmm. And so I moved to Atlanta because there's more opportunities up there. Right, right. And so it's uh, – and there's just a lot of people that are really good, so you're constantly being pushed. Right, you know? right, yeah. I needed to be in a place – that took me out of my comfort zone so that it would push me into doing what I needed to do to grow as an artist. Right. You know? And now I'm starting to bring back the, like all the art stuff that I was doing in school. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to bring that back in and incorporate that with my music. Cool. So that's really cool. That, that's kind of a nice thing that's starting to happen now. That's awesome. Yeah. The reason I asked that is because I was driving through Atlanta yesterday, and I was like, why would anybody want to live here? So well, I don't live in the city. Like, I don't live in the city. I just live close enough to the city right. to go in for work. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I do not like driving in the city. Yeah, I, I, lived, I lived in, when I lived down there, I lived in Buckhead, and I, I could stand Ooh. it for like two years, and I, yeah. I, psh, Crazy I'm gone. Traffic. Yeah, I can stand for a couple hours. <laughs> like, I can go into the city and play a gig and do something like that, and then I'm ready to be back out. Yeah. I need to be in the woods, really, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, then again, you can take all these drivers from, excuse me, guys, Phoenix City, and you, you can have them. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of drivers on the road y'all can have. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, now th- w- when you were here before, mm-hmm. I, I, w- I would watch you in uh, the clubs or whatever, and there was a style of music that you did. It was really fast and a lot of wh- – what style would you say that was? Because it was really neat. Ooh, I don't know. Um, it, I mean, it was definitely kind of percussive. Right, Because I, yes. I kind of slapped. Um, I wasn't using a pick, probably not. I no. might have I I still so. been using a pick some. 
I was experimenting a lot during that time because I remember I think when I came in and did that one is when I was using like one of those tip buckets as a drum ah. like I was putting the microphone inside of it and putting it on my stomach and using that to like mic drums and now when I do that like if I'm using loop pedals and things I do it on the guitar right, I find yeah. those sounds there so I don't. I would say experimental <laughs> is the best I can say for what I was doing. That's some really cool stuff, though. I remember yeah. that. You know, that stuck with me. I was like, that was that was a cool sound. It was it was, it was rapid, almost mm -hmm. like the the lyrics were very fast, and it was like it was just it was a neat sound. I was just kind of curious if that you was know, every time I say experimental, they always go. He's doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Tim says experimental, somebody calls the cops. So you, you, you basically are doing a lot of things like they did back in the 60s. I know the entire mm -hmm. uh, century of the 60s was experimental. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's how I'm the just Beatles came up with a lot of their stuff, you know. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's where you find the things, you know. You, kinda, you have to experiment for a while. Right. And then you fine-tune it. Some people don't ever fine-tune it. <laughs> At some point, you have to come in from, you have to take the experiments, step back, and do something with them, you know. This worked, this didn't. Yeah. Some people just keep the whole, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, free spirit, sometimes that's great. Sometimes right. that's the best, but. So uh, how do you think your, uh, uh, how has your music progressed? How, how has your style changed? You, your writing changed? I mean, I would say that it's progressing in, uh, I mean, one, working with Larry has helped me learn to fine tune some things mm -hmm. and getting my timing down. Um, Probably part of what you were hearing was stuff that I used to do. I just said everything all the time. I had lots of things to say, and I just was always, <laughs> I had lots of things to say. And when I went up to Atlanta, I kind of, I got into the blues scene for a while mm -hmm. and started learning more about appreciating, like, simplifying stuff. Mm -hmm. So I still do some songs where I put a lot of words in them, right. but I also do some things where I try to, you know, focus on the root. Right, of it, right, you know, the yeah. core and putting the feeling in there that needs to be there more than having a million words. Right. Well, know? just from personal taste, I think you should put at least one of those songs on every album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I try to put at least one thing that's got a good amount of words in it, <laughs> you know, but. So was it, uh, was it like when you moved to up, up that way, how was it like? finding the scene or, or getting into the scene was there like a was there an immersion process because certainly you don't just walk up to atlanta okay i'm here and then you're you know yeah um i started going to a lot of jams and open mics mm -hmm. and finding you just got to find the ones that work best for you right you yeah. know because there's a lot of them there's probably mm -hmm. one every night somewhere wow you know there's but there and there's different styles and there's different so it just depends what you're trying to do mm -hmm. with it, you know. There's definitely a singer-songwriter type stuff, and then there's, like, the jams. And so I started going. I did a couple singer-songwriter type things, and then I got into the jam scene because that was so different from right. what I did at all. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of – that helped me grow a lot, too, because it helped show me – like song structure. Right, right. When you're writing your own songs, you can use whatever structure you want, you which is can. fun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's why no one knew what I was doing because I did whatever <laughs> I wanted. But, uh, but learning to play with other musicians and playing in jams and, you know, I mean, back then I didn't know any cover songs, and now I've got at least you know 70 to 100 something, and right. just going through and learning other people's songs, right. like learning that kind of stuff. What's your favorite genre to cover? I don't know if I have a favorite genre. Uh, I'm not the slow ones. I hate saying that, but the slow one. I play those the best. I play those a lot better than the fast songs. I'm, I'm sure people would love it if I play a lot more fast songs <laughs> at my gigs. I, I keep trying to learn some fast, happy songs, but like, I do better with the other genres, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if, that's, if that's your strength, then that, mm -hmm. that's cool. Now, uh, tell me about uh, what is what's your muse? What do you like to write about? journey journeys mm -hmm. you know um i mean definitely like nature type stuff i like drawing those kinds of imagery into things mm -hmm. but i like stuff that kind of it's not necessarily telling a story but i feel like that's what we constantly do in life like right. everything's kind of a journey from one thing to the next mm -hmm. like the the album we'll talk about that one later like purpose is the one i already put out the one i'm about to put out is hope 
And both of those, I feel like, they're about the journey of finding those things. Right. You know, mm -hmm. not every song is straight up about that topic, but it's stuff that goes along with the process. Right. If that makes sense. Yes. Now, do you still do any of your earlier stuff, or have you just, like, totally moved on to new stuff? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can't remember them. Right. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, I'll write things, and I get so caught up in whatever I'm writing that, like, I'll obsess with whatever I'm writing for, you know, and I won't want to do anything else, and I'll only do that. And um, part of the issue is my voice changes over time. And so I, some of my older stuff I would have trouble doing now because I sing differently right. or I play differently. I could probably do it again, but I would have to, like, sit down and relearn it. I'd probably have to, like, restructure the song. That's interesting. That's very if interesting. that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, different keys, stuff like that. I write songs mm -hmm. in, in keys I can't actually sing. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. <laughs> I've been in that a lot lately. I'm trying to write like these lower ones, and so I'm sure my neighbors are hating listening to like, Ugh, like trying to sing these low notes. <laughs> well, as a, a nature lover, mm -hmm. do you have a hard time finding that that solitude up there? No, because I go and I look for it. Mm -hmm. Like um, lots of times, I take my dog. In the mornings, mm -hmm. I'll go to, like, nature preserves or uh, parks right. if I can. You know, sometimes timing doesn't let right. you. But yeah. for the most part, I don't get too much out of walking her on the street. And right. She doesn't get too much out of that either. Right. So, like, <laughs> we both kind of like being in the woods. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that if I can every day, even if it's only for, like, 10 or 20 minutes. Right, yeah. Just... Because for me, it's a, that's a game changer. Like, it changes the whole day. Right. If I start it out that way, mm -hmm. I can handle everything a lot better. Uh, can't talk better. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, now, you, you've been working with Larry Mitchell. And in the second mm -hmm. act, we're going we're gonna to get, uh, t or the second segment, we're going to get into more of your, your current projects. But um, you've worked with Larry Mitchell. Uh, how's that uh, relationship built? How? Yeah, I mean, did, like you met him. How how has that come along? Um. Well, he started. His mom lives down in Opelika, so he started coming down to Opelika to help her some, and spend time with her. And he started working with some guys down there. Um, well, you you probably you know I'm Russ yeah. in Austin, and so they started playing in his band down in this area, and I was in Atlanta at the time, and so they had me open for them a couple of times, mm -hmm. like for a couple of shows up there. That's cool. And uh, I guess he liked what I did. He liked mm -hmm. the songs that I was working on. And he, like I came in and just did like a, like a test run song one time. He needed someone, like a studio dummy. He needed someone to sit there and play so he could get it ready for someone that was coming from like New York. Right, right. And <clears throat> so that one, he just did that song for me. Wow. And that was... That was kind of a, you know, when you hear someone do take your song and do something with it that you didn't even know could happen <laughs> type thing. Like, yeah. I knew at that point in time from that one song, I was like, okay, I've got to do whatever it takes now to, like, be able to continue working with right. him. Because yeah. it was just, it was just crazy. Just the, not crazy, but you know Larry. Larry is very talented. And he's, <laughs> he does layers. He does all this stuff. And he knows how to, like, put things in without overpowering the song. Right, yeah. Because he could. He's got the ability, you know, if you, anyone who's heard Larry on guitar, he could just, you know, he could have the whole song. He doesn't even need me in the song. <laughs> but he, like, yeah, he is very good. And I've just, ever since then, I've enjoyed working with him. He's always, it's been a pleasure to work with him. He teaches me new things every time I go in there. That's so cool. Like. It's made me step my game up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, Tim, do you uh, have a commercial that you can roll? I uh, just want to mention that uh, that's a great story. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> like how you got started, like, oh, I just sat in so he could test his equipment, and, and that's how it got started. I, that, that's, that is a great story. That's, that's, uh, that's one that you'll see in a magazine later on down the road somewhere. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> um, and uh, if, if Larry Mitchell happens to see this, hi, Larry. We'll get you hey on the Larry. show one of these days. <laughs> Ready, Tim? Let's go to a commercial.
timeless beauty at the Gypsy Cherub, 3760 Woodruff Road, Columbus, Georgia. Class is back in style. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Right. Trying to get everything working here, guys. <laughs> <sighs> we, uh, Going to have a number done by Miss Kelly Martin. Katie. Katie. That's Katie. my aunt's name, though. I've got like 500 <laughs> things going on here, so. Oh, boy, I'll hear about that one for a while. Katie Martin, guys. I, I don't mind being a Kelly. I'm a, Kelly I'm a Katie. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, this is my song, uh, Fire in Our Hearts. go ladies and gentlemen got it right here in front of you that's Katie Martin and uh, as Brian gets in he begins to kind of move around and I'm trying to get me back over here camera three there's my ugly self you can go ahead and do what you got to do Brian uh, I wanted to uh, one more time uh, say thank you and uh, welcome our new sponsor to the show and that would be uh, would be American Guitar Boutique ladies and gentlemen and uh, 
they are located over on, I'm sitting over here, uh, 13th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama. And uh, one of the owners over there, and that is, uh, I believe it or not, my brother Mike, recorded a, uh, a little uh, commercial yesterday, and we thought, you know, we're going to play it and uh, give you guys, a, you know, just a little glimpse into the store. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, give that thing a shot. Huh? What? Can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What? Yeah, that's what happens when you don't protect your ears properly from loud noises. Musicians, we're all exposed to that. And uh, I'm living proof that if you don't take care of your hearing, you're going to end up being a problem and a pain in the butt for everyone around you. So, here at American Guitar Boutique, we have decided that we're going to take steps to help all of you avoid being like Mike. Uh, we're carrying some really nice earplugs here. Erasers. These are great plugs. They, uh, they're real comfortable. They sit in your ears. You can barely tell they're there. They reduce all the noise levels at a very flat rate. So you hear lows, you hear highs, everything you hear normally without the plugs, you hear that at a lower level that's safe for your hearing. Come in and check them out. Erasers, we like them, we use them. And that is American Guitar Boutique, 707 13th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama, 36867. Brian, we're going to go back to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go and get me some erasers because uh, I've got a lot of gigs coming up and my band is loud. <laughs> I, can, I already can barely hear. So, Katie, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, special guest Katie Martin, for those of you just tuning in. Um, let, let's go talk a little bit about some of your current projects. Okay, my current ones. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm about to put out Hope which will be my next CD. So right right the second, I'm doing the artwork on that. Right. Like, I finished all the studio thing, so I'm putting that. Do I need to talk a little bit more on this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'm working on that. Um, I'm still performing with Marie. Did, have you met Marie? I don't think so. Okay, well, I, I perform with her sometimes. We have a group called Hey Alligator, and so we've been doing a lot of writing. You probably have heard Hey, <laughs> hey Alligator. We've done the Columbus scene. A yes, few times. tell me what Hey Alligator is. I've seen it. I, I've seen <laughs> it. What, uh, what is that? Um, it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> we, you know, it, it changes over over the years. It kind of just it changes with our lives, and you know, uh, right. we have horns. We do electronic stuff. I'm still doing the loop pedal thing. Like right. so, when I play my guitar, I use loop pedals. In this band, I'm using a loop pedal, but it's with like a, a synth. Right, right. And so we're doing kind of the beats and that stuff. That's cool. That's cool. Um, kind I of comedic hip hop, kind of. Yeah. I like. I don't know if I'd put it straight up in that category, but that's about as close as I can. <laughs> well, that's art, you know. If you yeah. can, if you can nail it down, then it's business, yeah. not art. Or <laughs> then it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got to have a little ambiguity there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And uh, you, uh, tell me about Darwin's. Darwin's is. We're about to have celebrate five years. I've been doing the Saturday jams up there mm -hmm. for, it, I guess it's five years about at this point. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. That has been a learning experience for me, <laughs> <laughs> running like an open mic that it turned, I didn't know anything really about jams. I was running an open mic, and then most of the people that come out to it are actually jammers. And so it kind of morphed its way into more of a jam over the years. Interesting. So it's still some of both. If people, like, show up to play the open mic, right. then I give them open mic spots. Right. And, like, right now I'm doing it, I kind of, like, I'll bring in a featured artist each week for the first little part, and they open the show with me. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that, and uh, and then it'll go into the open mic afterwards. That's cool. That's very cool. And where is Darwin's? It is in Sandy Springs. Mm -hmm. It's what used to be Steve's Live Music. Ah, it's in okay. that building. Very cool. But Sandy Springs, Georgia. I need to uh, get up there and get the lay of the land up around that area more. I've, I've been up there a couple of times, but I'm still trying to feel out the, the area. Um, like I was in Stone Mountain yesterday and like oh, nice. looking at maps the whole way. Where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. I'm sitting here on the, working on the computer trying to get things ready for the show, and here comes Brian calling me on the computer. He's like, look, look, and he's standing <laughs> on top of Stone Mountain. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I love I love being the uh, uh, in, in a production. I love being the the, the useless guy. He's like, hey, what's up? No, I'm not useless. <laughs> I do that in my in my thing. I shoot with my nephew too. But um, you know, uh, Katie's got a uh, show to get to today, so we're gonna we're, we're try to get her out of here in a timely fashion. So um, while Tim is dialing up another commercial, so we can come back and pimp wha- all the stuff that that she's got to pimp. Um, tell me a little bit about where you would like to see your music go. Well, I want to go play. Like, I want to tour around in, you know, other countries and around <laughs> here. You know, I want to do some traveling. And so I'm hoping my music helps me do that. Right, I try right. to, like, incorporate those two things together. Um, I definitely want to put out some more albums. I've got some stuff that's kind of in the works right now. Mm-hmm. Um like, I like collaborating with some people. Yeah. I've got some different people that I've been collaborating with some, so I'm interested to see where some of that goes. That's very cool. I've been working with another guitar player, uh, Mike Martin. We mm-hmm. have the thing called Dos Martins that when we play ah. together, and it's a, Dos Martin notes. It, it's a fun show. And yeah. so that one's – he's another one. He's like Larry. He's one of those people. It's like you play with them, and you got to step your game up because right. they're really good, and you're like, oh, man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah. I can do this. I got to practice before the next gig. <laughs> Man. But um, so, like, I, I just I want to keep growing as a musician, basically. that That's my main goal. As long as I'm growing and, like, you know, if I'm writing stuff, I'm happy with that. I, it's hard for me to make a, a set thing. Right. Like, I want to be here. I want to do this because I passed wherever I thought I was going to go to, you know, 10 years ago when I started this. Right. I wouldn't have thought that I would have gotten to do any of the things that I've gotten to do. Right. In the past couple of years. And, you know, they're not up here mm. like some people's things, but there's still things for me where I was like, wow, I got to do that. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. You know? I want to do this, except I want to do it bigger now. <laughs> I want to play a bigger festival or I want to play this or, you yeah. So I guess I want to produce the type of work that will get me – that makes it to where I get to play those kinds of shows. Because right. I do, I love playing the big shows. It, there's fun. I mean, I, I like sitting and playing the small things and getting to interact with people. Right, yeah. But there's nothing like the, you know, being on big stage with a lot of people. Right. All that energy. <laughs> 20,000 screaming fans. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I, we're going to lay down bets if I'm not going to see her in Nashville the next five years. <laughs> Maybe. You never know. You never know. <laughs> She's geologically closer. Or beyond. Ge- geologically? Geographically closer than she was five years ago. And, yeah, and I am closer. Way farther, <laughs> you know, way uh, has progressed quite a bit. So there's absolutely no reason. And uh, I think she would be great on the radio. Yeah. A lot better than what's on the radio now. <laughs> hey, I might get there. Maybe with this next one. I, I like the songs on this next one. Very cool. I'll tell you what, let's yeah. go to a commercial and we'll come back and uh, show s- some of the merchandise that Katie has for you to get your hands on. Hi. Hello, I'm Catherine Children with Let's Vocalize. For over 35 years, I've coached vocalists and groups privately. I also perform vocal workshops training choirs. I'd love the opportunity to show you how direction, discipline, vocal health care, and regular practice can drastically improve you, your group, or your choir's performance. Call me at 706-536-6123 or visit us online at www.letsvocalize.com. I'd love to help you offer your best gift. Yes, toddy, the chocolate malt in a can. It's so good hot. It's so good cold. It hits the spot with young and old. Yes, toddy pleases everybody. Delicious chocolate malted toddy made with rich, real milk, not powdered milk. So come and get it, everybody. It's time to drink your chocolate toddy. Mmm, delicious. Hello and welcome back to the show with special guest Katie Martin. And here we have a basket of goodies. These are the things that this is this is what we, we frequently refer to as the pimping section. Or I do anyway. Well, and that doesn't like mean Kmart, so <laughs> 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 this is where we promote 
all the things that our guest has to promote. So what do you have in this basket that you would like to promote, Katie? Okay. Well, I've got not, not that one. Let's see. See, I should have had the drum roll, you know, <laughs> going here. Here it is. Okay. So, I brought a couple of my CDs. I've done two of these now. These are live from the chocolate room. That's Larry's studio. Nice. So, this is the one I just put out. This is volume two. I put this one out after I finished Purpose. Nice. Which is? And we'll, we'll have better pictures of those up on our, our Facebook page. Right, right yes. After that, yes. So. Uh, camera's not the best at zooming. That one. I see that. So when I made Purpose, I also made. Uh -oh. There's like a book wow, book. she has a whole gamut of she does product. Let me give you a hand here. There's a booklet in here somewhere. Oh, I'm holding it. I'm holding <laughs> it, guys. <laughs> it's on me. I did it. So for the album Purpose, I made an art booklet, as you can see here. It's got all the lyrics cool. for the songs, and I did all the drawings for it. Unreal. And that's so that's like liner notes that used to be an album right. so yeah. long ago. That's neat. You've so made an this. art booklet that is the, the liner notes, which is basically that's cool. That is incorporating. That's great marketing. And it made it. Um, it costs a lot more if you get these booklets and these all printed at the same time. And so I got these printed, and I got only, like, 50 of these made in the beginning. Right. And so every time I sell 50 of them, then I'll go and get another 50 of these nice. printed. So that, that's part of the reason. That's why it's separate. <laughs> but um, it also, I got to make it bigger, and I kind of right. like it. It kind of makes it like a little book. And so that's what I'm working on with Hope is I'm making this part of that one because I like yes. incorporating that and right. I feel like the words are important mm -hmm. with oh, what I yeah, do absolutely. and so people and I don't enunciate very well sometimes <laughs> and so <laughs> people don't know what I'm saying anyway so I, this way they get to see what the words are that is fantastic you know? I, I feel your pain in that area so <laughs> <laughs> You've got the practice, though. The, the enunciation part, yeah. I just, I got to do a radio ad for someone that, like, a month or two ago, and I, that's, that's a skill. That is a skill set. Like, I had to just sit and say the words over and over again, trying to get it, because it's only 30 seconds, and you got to get yeah. it right. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, I can do advertising. I was like, whew. <laughs> it, it, it was fun. I liked it, but it, that is, uh, I had to practice. Um, and Katie, where can the, oh, you got. Oh, yeah. I made a coffee cup. This is using some of the artwork that's going to be on Hope. And y'all can have this. I brought this one's for y'all if you want it. And oh I just wow. started, I made koozies. I didn't make this. Well, okay, but I made, um, I'm having to write my own name on it because <laughs> <laughs> the, the image did not print. My words were too small in the image. Uh -huh. They told me to. And I was like, just do it because it <laughs> looked like it was going to be right in the picture. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then it didn't. So, you know, they're getting some gold flair on them. But this is for y'all. Y'all can have this. That's cool. Cool. Yeah, definitely. I, I love the way she did all the, the artwork and incorporated everything together. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Branding, right? Oh, like yeah. Branding, I'm trying to learn. And, you <laughs> know, most people school, don't understand that. Like you know, they, they, they go and say, hey, I have only one. Oh, I got something to call on my watch. <laughs> one skill set. And uh, she's actually, you know, using yeah. multiple skill sets. That's pretty cool. That a lot of musicians around here uh, could, um, or anywhere, could uh, take a tip from is the, the the multiple branding. That's that's genius. Well, and when it comes down to it, you got to have some like some type of merch. Yeah. Because um, yeah. you're not always going to get paid what you want to get paid. Places. Right. And you right. got to have something that works for you on days that you're not working. Right. Or that that's yeah. kind of where. So it's like if I'm gonna spend a lot of time making art, I gotta find something to do with that art so that later I can find a way to pay for the fact that I spent all the time making right, it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the artist quandary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where can they find these? <laughs> well, I normally I have them with me at almost every gig. I'm trying to get a little bit better about getting an online store going. So I, that part's still in the works. But I have them with me at my gigs and then the album purpose is on that one is on like iTunes, all mm. that kind of stuff. Very um, cool. Bandcamp, and so I think I'm gonna try to put these two live albums up in the next couple weeks, right. so that that way when I release Hope, I can put them all 
I'm trying to learn the business side. Like, I, I did BMI and all the copyright stuff with purpose, and I'm still... I want to make sure I get that right before I start doing it with right. the next one. And yeah. I, the two live albums, I hadn't done that yet. And so I need to need to sit down, drink <laughs> a lot of coffee one day, and <laughs> go reread all those little things. The copyright <laughs> process is eye glazing. And we'll drink yeah. coffee in our <laughs> Katie yeah. cup. In our Katie cup. Katie cup, yeah, yes. Yeah. That is awesome. It'll make you feel good while you're drinking out. And you're like, okay, I got this. I got this. <laughs> Well, you, now you know where you can get Katie Martin's music. She's got a couple of CDs for y for your consummation, for your for your consumption. That's the <laughs> word I'm looking for. Not consummation, for your consumption. And like I uh, said, we feel your pain <laughs> on the enunciation. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, you know, I narrate a lot because I, I have some other pro video projects, so I do the latest narration on there. And I You have a narrating voice. It, it becomes very it. clear, though, how, like, I stumble over words a lot, and I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. I can't put that on there. It's like, it really, when you try to do it for reals. It yeah, <laughs> or when you record it and you have to hear yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I have to practice. I practice, like, reading out loud sometimes because I know I have issues with it. <laughs> and yeah, I, have, I host things, and I'm like, people ask me to host, and I'm like, you want me to host? I can't, I never say anyone's name right. It's really <laughs> embarrassing. I feel bad every time. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I'll try to yell their name and be like, please welcome. And then I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so it's so kind of like, kind yeah, of like when you're in charge of that. Uh, today, kind of like when me. someone calls you Kelly yeah, instead yeah. of Katie. Yeah, right, See, right, that's yeah. why it doesn't bother me because I, I am never going to live that one down. <laughs> 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 yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I don't take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the interest of uh, K Kelly, Katie, <laughs> 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 getting Katie. to her, she answers uh, to both. So, yeah. uh, Either one. <laughs> <laughs> getting to her, her, her gig, her show on time. We probably oh, yeah. should go ahead and wrap this up. But, um, I oh. pr Katie, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. And um, it's fun. Appreciate Tim over there running everything. I'm your host, Brian Mallard. Until next time, look up some of Katie's music yes. and go to Katie's mm -hmm. shows. And, uh, huh? I get, get anything, Tim? Nope. American Guitar Boutique. American Guitar Boutique. Oh, I'm we at, is it Wild Wing? With Brittany Avery next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Really? Is that the second? Now, yeah. see, she always, people always do that. They know I work Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they have shows Monday through Friday. <laughs> Come Saturday, it's like, oh, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, uh, rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tim conspiracy. <laughs> no, that's, that's why we're going to get a, a jam session over here. Yeah, yeah. And, be uh, as, as we get closer to Christmas, actually, we're going to get all our, our artists and uh have a live stream with just, you know, different artists going back and forth. That'd be cool. And nice. So have a nice time with that. Well, give Katie, Katie plenty of time. I was make sure I didn't say Kelly. Yeah. Plenty <laughs> of time to uh, where she can uh, not have to make that long drive again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it for me. Is it for me? How about you, Bob? Oh, that's it for me. <laughs> Katie Martin, y'all. Guys, see you next week. <laughs>